And today we're going to do self storage 101. We're going to talk about like, I'm going to go through case studies and I'm just going to give you like a brief overview of like your step by step process. And yesterday we did like kind of a general one. We're going to go even right. So help you to find some, some deals and stuff. So I'm um, looking forward to it. I'm going to share my screen right now. Their screen and uh, if you have any questions or issues or anything just put it into the Facebook live chat so um, that way we can chat with each other how how does it sound on Facebook uh, live it's sounding a lot better now you guys can understand me and everything if it is do like a thumbs up or do a, a yes that's the chat Garrett you got it that's the chat okay and if you missed yesterday you can go into the Facebook live group and you can just go to the unit section in the group and you can re-watch yesterday's session okay um and let's see what else okay so today we're going to do i love talking about storage facilities it's so fun all right so we're going to share this screen uh let me know if you can see this screen uh if you can see my here can you see can you hear me how How's it looking? Can you see, what do y'all see when you see my screen? When you see self-storage investing is what it says? Is that what y'all are seeing? Yeah, let me know what y'all see, okay? Okay. I think this is like, if it has this up here, that means it's sharing on this screen, right? I think I'm just sharing the screen. No, so now it's not, now it's gonna share, not share. Well, let me stop. My share and share the screen. I think we had this issue yesterday. Their screen. This one is what I want. Okay. All right. And then this over to this screen. Now. This. Okay. Now you should see self storage investing, the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. No, oh, Pete's doing something. So fast. How's it looking? How is everything? Understand me now? Any issues? Uh, I know everything's fine. Y'all can hear me. There's no lag or anything. No. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's get to uh, let's get to the facility. Let's get. To the, uh, to the presentation, all right? So, um, okay, so um, just, I know a lot of you guys were on yesterday, and if you weren't on, just a brief interview, this is me, all right? Stacy, my name is Stacy Petty, and then thank you very much for joining the presentation and hanging out with me today, hanging out this week with me. Uh, I've been teaching people how to invest in real estate uh, for a while now, and started teaching people how to uh, also uh, invest in storage facilities about a year ago. And, um, and I love buying storage facilities. Uh, we actually got three storage facilities under contract uh, yesterday, and we're just buying as. Right, so this is my family right here. So my husband Pete, he manages all of our storage facilities, and my daughter Lillian is right there, and uh, she's four years old. And um, I take her to the storage facilities, and I tell her like, "Look, this is your future," and she just goes, "Mom, I'm bored. Can I want?" Peppa Pig. Well, she has no idea, right? But um, she gets to hang out with us as we go to all of our storage facilities. Okay, so and then this is uh, um, this is my husband and I. As of January of last year, we made the commitment to um, to be able to travel 15 days a month, every single month. That's it. Like we're only working. Our goal is like only working 15 days out of the month, and that's it. You know. So uh, now the 15, like so. Those 15 days, uh, most of the time, you know, we only work like a couple hours a week. And then I teach. I do a lot of teaching as well. But a storage facility is what affords us that, um, that lifestyle, right? Storage facilities, any type of buy and hold that would be able to do that, but especially storage facilities, right? So uh, we have been, and I told everybody this yesterday, we've been in New York for the past um, couple of months. My husband came over two months ago. So, and just been hanging out in New York with the family as soon as like all the COVID stuff started. Like, 
sent him to New York to hang out with his family, take care of his family and stuff. And all of our storage facilities are in Georgia, right? So we manage all, he can manage all of the storage facilities in New York and they're all in Georgia, right? And essentially that's our goal is to be able to be anywhere in the world and still manage our facilities and make money and teach and do the things that we want to do and then still travel at the same time right so before I met um, before I met my husband Pete all I did was travel and uh, I'm a big traveler my goal has been since the, at the age of 18 one new country a year and I've pretty much done that my entire life and um, and so then when I met Pete, and Pete had never even tried. Pete, Pete had never even tried like been on the plane I think with me once or twice and that's it he was the type of guy that he had to, he'd have to go to the bar and drink to get drunk you know to get all buzzed up so he could get on the airplane he was like super scared of traveling and he met me and he was just like i was like sorry you're gonna have to travel the very first trip that we took was to i took him to panama and he had never even left the country before but um so we have we, we have we have a lot of time we travel now all, everywhere and we do a lot of um international traveling and we travel all through the united states as well we have an rv all right but if you need like you need that you need like you need that money. You need that lifestyle to be able to do that. And I'm telling you, storage facilities allow you to do something like that if you set it up properly and know what you're doing. Okay. So and then yeah. So here is the list of everything um, that we that we basically we've been investing in real estate for ten years now, and we own we've owned rental property, we've done wholesale deals. We're going to talk about wholesale facilities as well because I do wholesale storage facilities um, love that and uh, rehabbing uh, uh, we do a lot of we've done, we do a lot of rehabs we're going to rehab right now commercial property um, and also storage facility and storage facility owners so this is kind of like you know we started out and we kind of moved up the up the chain and now it's like okay commercial I love commercial properties because you just make a lot of money with commercial property right and just it's just a different type of a, a mindset right from from and from houses okay so let's get started let's get into storage facility investing so that everybody has an overview and then I'm gonna give you a lot of tips so make sure you get ready to take your notes all right take a lot of notes because I'm gonna give you a brief overview of all the different areas and what you should be working on right how what you should be doing okay so how in the heck do you find your storage facilities Stacy right so how do I find these storage facilities so what I do is actually and we talked about this yesterday I go driving for storage facilities all right and this is what I tell all of my students and my mastermind is like this is the best way and I, and I had coaching I had my coaching call uh, this 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 morning with my students and we talked about this again is that the best way to buy to find storage facilities right now is to drive around and to find the hidden storage facilities okay these are the storage facilities that are not on um the, uh, not on google maps not on google maps all right so um so what that means is that you still go to google maps essentially you map out everywhere you know you map out the areas of where you want to focus for a uh, for a search at right so not inside major cities we talked about this yesterday you can't go into orlando and find a storage facility you can't go to Dallas right now and find storage facilities because basically all the REITs right, have come in and they have bought all those things up. There is a great a webinar. Um, if, I, if you guys remind me in the Facebook group, I'll try to find it and put it in the Facebook group. But it's by Marcus and Millichap. It's like an hour long webinar and it talks about like, um, you know, what all of the, how all of the, the big box companies look for deals right and it's uh, it's by Marcus and Millichap and they have like I think either cube smart or U haul or public storage like the CEOs and uh, whatever marketing you know directors of all these companies are on this webinar and they're talking about how they find their storage facilities and how they market their storage facilities right and um, and basically they talked about like I mean they were they were focusing on Dallas Houston Orlando Atlanta 
you know, Boston, uh, you know, all the big major cities, you know, in the country, they're just like at that time, they have changed a little bit because of what's happening right now. But at that time, they would just, they would just go into those cities and every single personal owner in those cities, right? Anybody that was like a me, you know, they would just come in and just offer a price to them and just buy them up. Um, I pulled up this yesterday today on um on the public on on the uh, storage facilities that was in, in the uh, slide yesterday that said you know there's like new hall i mean there's like i think the biggest uh, storage facility owner is public storage and then there was cube smart and extra storage or something like that and i think like public storage owns like maybe almost three thousand storage facilities like across the united states and that's because they just they're philosophy is like go into the major cities and buy every single storage storage facility up that you can inside the metro Atlanta areas and then, and then as the cities develop they go outside of those cities but you're not going to find like a cube smart like in the middle of Georgia right or in the middle of, you know of the, of the state right so anyways um so marketing so the best way to find storage facilities is to find the hidden storage facility they're not on the maps right so you have to that means that you have to map out the maps take out all the big box all these companies take out any storage facilities that you see they own a lot of them right and um and, th and don't discount those because they may be like me you know i own six facilities if somebody called me up and say hey i'll, I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll give you two million dollars or three million dollars for your facility to be selling i'll say yeah or if they say hey can I buy your one facility? I would say, yeah, hey, you know, give me a price. I'll sell that one facility, right? So don't discount those. You just want to definitely not going to, you know, they're not going to sell to you. They'll sell to like other weeks or whatever they'll do. But the owners that have like maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven facilities, because there are a lot of those out there, you can always contact them and see if they'll, if they'll sell that one facility to you that, that you want and just see, you know. But, uh, but most of the ones that you're going to be uh, looking for are the one-offs, right? There's a mom and pop shop here, and a mom and pop shop here, and a mom and pop shop here. Okay? And and so, and then what you're going to do is map all those mom and pop shops out, right? And um, and then you're going to go and drive those areas. And I know it sounds like horrible, but I'm telling you, the only way for you to get to know your market, to really get to know the market in that area, is to drive around and take a Look. And what you do is you look for those facilities that are on the maps, right? You kind of check them out, but at the same time, you keep an eye out for facilities that are not on the map. Because I'm telling you, there are just as many facilities that are not on Google Maps as that there are on Google Maps, okay? And um, and then that way you can find the, those storage facilities that have not, you know, that literally have no idea how to run their their uh, company, or they don't care. They don't care about how. Running because they may be full. Like I said, the one the, the, the one that we just put under contract by three storage facilities, he's been 100% full for years and years and years. And um, he doesn't even have a website, no website at all, right? And he's not on Google Maps. He doesn't even, oh, he doesn't even, he doesn't care. And um, so those are the type of facilities that I'm telling you, the untouched hidden market that, uh, that realtor have not touched and mess with their brain right or you know other wholesalers have not touched and mess with their brains right so anyway so that is how you market that's the marketing that i feel is the best marketing because you want to be able to you want to be able to get double digit cap rate it's your goal is double digit cap rates to purchase right at least double digit that means 10 percent cap rate or higher right and the higher the better Right, and if you go online now, here is a list of online uh, storage facilities. Uh, I mean, sorry, online uh, uh, websites that you can go and find storage facilities that are for sale. Okay, so you can go online and you can look at these, right? But most of the time, these storage facility uh, mar uh, uh, websites, their prices are just ridiculous. Now, I put on this list kind of, um, uh, you know, the I, you know. 
I didn't put Crexy on there, LoopNet, or the MLS on these ones. I found like the, these are like the, the websites that are kind of like the offshoots, right? Um, and so the, and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that, um, are you, is it, is it still skipping? I apologize. If it's skipping, then go to the Zoom link, okay? So just so y'all know, if it's skipping, go to the Zoom link. I think on the Zoom link, it should be okay, because I think this, I don't know if it's Facebook then. Okay, hang on, let's see. All right, if it's, and I would just go straight to the Zoom link, and the Zoom link is in the, face, is in the Facebook group, okay? All right, I apologize. I'm not sure why it's skipping on the Facebook Live, right? But I did put the Zoom link in um, in uh, Zoom is doing it too as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Let me get Pete just a sec. Let me tell him. I'm not sure why it's skipping. So um, just as we keep moving forward until Pete comes, maybe we'll check it out and see what's going on. I'm not 100% sure. Keep on trucking. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So anyways, uh, the, um, the online, so this, this is a list of all the online marketing sites. Okay. So, um, so you can check these out. Um, and this is not Prexy. This is not Zoom. This is not, uh, not uh, LoopNet. This is just like other small business owners. Oh, you can get some storage facilities that are for sale on these sites. Okay. All right. Okay. And then also I wanted to make sure and remind you guys about all of the Facebook groups that are out there. Right. So you want to go into Facebook and sign up for the Facebook groups so that you can um, start becoming a part of, of the community. Right. And there's a gazillion different, there's not a gazillion, there's probably like 10 Facebook groups, okay? And you can join them all and you can try to figure out which ones you like, um, which ones, you know, which ones you want. But what I would do is just pay attention to what everybody's posting in those Facebook groups because a lot of storage facility owners go into those Facebook groups and then they'll post out questions. And it's like, I mean, essentially, it's like face. It's like storage facility questions. It's like, where do you get your latches? Where do you get your doors? Um, you know, how do you analyze this deal in Ohio? How do you figure out what the cap rate is in uh, in my local area? This kind of stuff. And so they're actually really good questions, but it, you know, but um, so you'll see a, a huge different um, list. You'll see a, a lot of different questions. So it really kind of educates you on like the talk, self-storage talk, right? Is really what it is. So just please uh, make sure you check those out. That is going to be your homework as well for today is to go to the Facebook groups and join and you know just introduce yourself and let everybody know that Stacy said you know to get in this group so you can learn more about storage facilities right so everybody should know me in the groups because I'm quite active in all those groups as well too right I'm trying to help everybody out um, due diligence okay so before due diligence all right um, now what you want to do all right so when you when you drive around and you're looking for storage facilities, right? The best thing I'm telling you to do is to call the storage facility owner up right when you're in front of their building, right when you're in front of their storage facility, okay? So, um, so what that, that means is, and, and, and like a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll drive around and they'll get like, you know, they'll collect phone numbers and they'll come back and then they'll call them everybody right which is which is okay right but i'm telling you every store like a storage facility owner like if i if i call them and i'm right in front of that building i'll say um so you know i'll be like hey this is stacy rossetti i was calling about your storage facility and they'll say oh yeah you're interested you want a unit and i'll say no no, no I, don't, I don't want a unit i want to um i want to buy your storage facility you know and then uh, then a lot of times they'll you'll hear this pause and they'll say um when can you meet right and you say oh well actually i'm in front of 
everybody's having issues. Too. So, and, um, so I'll, they'll say, when can you meet? I'll say, oh, I'm right in front of your storage facility. I'm like right, I'm right around the corner. And they'll say, we'll be there and just. And I'm telling you, of all the facilities that I bought, so, I mean, when, when I'm right there in front of that storage facility and I'm calling them and feeling like I need them right there, they are like so excited. I mean, they'll just, they'll come over immediately and talk to you. And, um, and then you can just talk, you can just talk to them because really, Really in this business, it's all about just like building a building rapport. Okay. So that is the one thing that you can do. Now, when you talk to them, all you want to do is just ask them questions about the facility. Think about it right here and in the chat while you're thinking about it, ask what kind of questions can you ask the facility? All right. In the chat, put some suggestions in there of what you think that you should be asking. Right. So I want to know what everybody thinks like some of some good questions would be for your due diligence if you call somebody and talk to them right or if you meet them right in, in front of their facility what are some good questions that you can ask the owners when you're talking to them right this is not science what is not this is not what's not, not difficult right it's not rocket science it's not rocket science right it's just typical questions that you would want to know when you're talking to a storage facility owner right Right. So you would want to ask questions, you know, you would want to ask questions like, um, maybe it's this thing. Um, so maybe uh, you want to ask them like, you know, yeah, how many units do you have, right? What are, how much do they pay for their units? Like, what's this, what's the story behind your facility? How long have you owned it? Um, you know, what's the square foot? footage of the facility um does this gate work you know do you ever, do you ever have any issues with your gate if you want a gate um you know so, um let's see what else you know how many people are paying versus how many people are not paying right so like do you have a lot of like bad tenants um you know how long have your tenants been there for on average yeah you know so you want to ask them just the typical question in order for you to calculate a deal right in order for you to calculate a deal you have to have these questions all right that these are the only real major things that you need right you need to know what their um what the purchase price is right what's how much are you buy it for number one is it is so you can ask them like you know what do you want to sell this thing for you know what do you have any suggestions you know sometimes they do and sometimes they don't number two is um what is the net what is the gross income? What's the gross income that you make every single year, your annual gross income? Number three is what is your vacancy rate, right? Are you 100% full, 60, 70, 50, 40? What's your vacancy rate? And number four is what are your expenses, right? What are your expenses every single month? And a lot of storage facility owners, honestly, the best part about storage so it's didn't really have that many expenses. I'm sure they can tell you. Expense control lawn care, taxes, insurance, electric. That's really basically it. I mean, especially if they don't have a website or anything like that, they don't have to pay for software or anything, right? So, um, and then, uh, and then, um, and that's it. Because in order to calculate your, your cap rate, those are the four things that you need. You need your purchase price, vacancy rate, gross income, and expenses, right? And actually, Actually, what you can do very simply is just get a, cal a cap rate calculator, right? And then you can put those in to be able to figure out what your cap rate is going to be. And remember, you want double digit cap rates, double digit cap rates, okay? So I just went in and I just looked up an app called Cap Rate Calculator and I put it on my phone, and that's how I um, that's how I uh, calculate everything, okay? And then you. Can you can just play around with the numbers until you figure out which purchase price is going to be the best for you, right? Sorry, I'm going to go with Okay, now what is the document that you need, the most important document? Everybody put this into the, the chat. What do you think is the most important document that you need in order to um, make a decision on your um, 
your storage facilities, right? So you need to know, like I said, your net, your gross income, you need to know your expenses, and you need to know the vacancy rate and the purchase right in order purchase price in order to calculate your cap rate, right? So what is that one document? What do you think? that you need in order to um, make a decision right yes exactly now remember on a mismanaged facility on a mismanaged facility you are not going to get a P&L and a balance sheet you're not I'm sorry most of the time these storage facility owners they do not have this right now if it's a bigger facility and they're maybe they're just they're just struggling you may get a story you may get a P&L but a lot of times if I mean, pretty much every storage facility that I've ever bought, they don't have a P&L on the balance sheet. I'm sorry. They barely even use a computer. Let me see me go here. Actually, you just do that, and I think I can touch this. Rent roll, right? And some of you put that in there. Rent roll, right? So um, what that means is, like, if you can get it, ask them, like, do you have a rent roll? How many people are paying rent? How many people are not paying rent, right? If you can get that ask for it. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, next slide. Okay, all right, good. So the rent roll, everybody asked for the rent roll. So how do you fund these things? Let's talk about funding right now. Let's talk about how can you find for these storage facilities. All right, okay, so for your storage facilities, you want to to focus on finding private lenders and finding commercial lenders, all right? So what that means is um, uh, with commercial lenders, I love y'all. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry, that's my daughter, she came in. Um, okay, so for commercial lenders, right, you've got, you've got to understand commercial deal analysis. So you've got to be able to understand, like I said, your cap rate, and you know now how to calculate you have an app for now, at least. Now, when you really get into this, and do analysis, right? Commercial do analysis, right? And so you really need to educate yourself on how to calculate, like, your yield, your ROI, or um, your, uh, your cap rate, all right? You really have to understand how to do that. We're not going to get totally deep into that this week because that's like – that's a lot. That goes super duper deep. So now you know that you've got to educate yourself on that stuff. How do you educate? How do you learn how to run commercial deal analysis? All right. So overall, you want to know like you, know, you can know by just calculating your cap rate. Okay, this is actually a good deal. But if you do commercial deal analysis, what that means is that you're going to you're going to be able to project over the course of the next five to seven years how much money you're actually going to be able to make and stuff, right? And how if you're if there's a value add property. How like what's how are you going to value add it and how much money you're going to make from it right so that's the commercial deal analysis now we're going to get we're not going to get too much into that this week because um I don't want to complicate everybody right now it's all about just let's just try to find it, right let's try to find a couple of storage facilities and maybe run some quick analysis on it um, okay so the so you want to focus on private lenders right so you want to basically find regular people to uh, to lend money to. Right? So I'm 100% privately funded. I basically just get people to give me the money to buy um, storage facilities. That's what I do, right? I have, have yet to go to a commercial lender because I don't need to go to a commercial lender until it, because what happens is I'll just get like a private lender to, uh, to you know, because I buy, I buy mismanaged properties, right? And so with a mismanaged property, if you don't have a PL and l and a balance sheet, then you're going to have to borrow private money for it. So you're either going to have to partner or you're going to have to uh, borrow private money, right? So to somebody. Because like, you know, commercial lenders are not going to lend you money if it's not cash flow, right? So that's why I put these two up here. Private lenders you need to focus on and commercial lenders you need to focus on. Depending on which way you go, right? So you can find mismanaged properties, you can buy cash flowing properties, or you can build, right? If you build, you can go and get a borrow money to get a construction loan. If you buy a cash flowing property, you can go to a commercial lender and put 20% down and borrow the rest, right? And then, but if you 
you have a mismanaged property, you have to find private money for that, right? So that's why I'm privately funded because I buy a lot of mismanaged properties. And um, so you need to focus on really trying to find those types of, of lenders, right? Commercial lenders are going to be like SBA loans, commercial, like commercial brokers or like hard money lenders okay and there's a lot of them out there so you have to focus on and, and what I said yesterday remember is you got to go to a RIA right find your RIAs your local real estate investment associations or go to your self storage association every single one of pretty much every state has a self storage association as well too and they will have commercial lenders that are like vendors of your association right? if you they will have lenders that will lend on commercial projects you can if you join your self storage association association you should be able to find at least a good starting point for finding money on the commercial side commercial lender side private lenders are literally like friends and family and acquaintances and co-workers and like this kind of thing is what it like just like regular people in your life that you can go and borrow money from okay and what i do is i'll borrow money for a mismanaged property and i'll take a loan out for you know usually on like three years because it takes a good year to two years just to get it up up and running and make money and a commercial lender if you're going to refi out they want you to have like one year of income like they want to show that you have like at least six to eight months a lot of them one year of like income coming in on a regular basis and then they'll refi it out so that's why i take out like a two to three year loan on all my uh properties with a private lender that makes sense okay and then uh, and then you want to manage Manage your office. Uh, you want to manage your office, right? Is managing your storage facility office a lot of work? No. If you know how to manage it properly, we talked about this yesterday. So, um, you know, now if you're going to buy like a million dollar plus facility with a couple hundred, you know, storage facilities, well, it's more work to that than it is to manage like 50, 60, 70, you know. But the thing is, is that we have around almost 500 doors and we have all we have have is an office manager that works 25 hours a week and we have a, a boots on the ground person that works one day a week and goes around to all the facilities and just checks on them picks up the trash and you know and overlocks and this kind of thing right so uh and then maybe does a couple of minor repairs you know if there's like a hole or something like that you know and, and they'll do that and that person works one day a week we pay him a couple hundred dollars a week all right for the day you know he gets a couple hundred dollars for the day um, and then, and then now we're about to pick up another, I think 180 units, something like this. And so our, our, our office manager that works 25 hours a week and she's been working 25 hours a week for, uh, like several years for us now, probably about three, three years now at 25 hours a week in that many doors. And, um, and we're about to add another 200, almost 180 to 200 doors. And we're going to just bump her time up to 40 hours a week. All right. So actually one office office manager manages is going to be managing like 650 doors okay and that's like a full time and then we answer the phone she'll answer the phone from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night and then that's it she doesn't answer the phone but she also answers on the weekends as well too for us she just answers you know we pay her that extra time over the weekends and stuff to answer phones and she'll just you know we just pay her per call is what we do and um and so it kind of comes out like it comes out a lot cheaper because call centers are kind of expensive honestly and really they are kind of expensive so we just figured like if we're going to pay that much money for our call center like if we're going to pay you know whatever twenty four hundred dollars a month for like a full-time student party a full-time office you know, because they add like call centers add like per facility is what they do it's like it would have been the same amount of money for just a call center but versus like an on like an office manager so we just have an office manager runs the company for us. She doesn't know this. She does pretty much everything for us, uh, you know, um, and she does a really good job. And, um, and like essentially, and eventually what we'll do is as we grow and grow and grow, she'll just become like, you know, the operational manager of the entire thing. And then we will have like a couple of other people, other people underneath her that she can manage stuff like this. And so we're kind of building her up and um, teaching her and getting her all ready for we are going to be buying a lot of storage facilities over the coming years all right but ultimately what we've done as you can see is that and we hired her 
her on the second storage facility that we got. The first one was about 120 units. The second one was another like 60 or 80, I think 80. So we had around 200 units. And right about that time, we hired her to come in and manage everything. And um, because, you know, I don't want to do it. And Pete doesn't want to do it. So we have to get somebody to do it, right? Um, and um, and then I, so and then it's okay. Well, we have to pay for this office manager. So that means like, oh, we got to go. Well, I'm gonna buy some more storage facilities, you know, kind of a thing. You know, so you kind of offset it. Does that make uh, Does that make sense to everybody? I just want to make sure. But no, it does not take a lot of time if you automate and systematize your uh, storage facilities. Okay. All right. Good. Does everybody got it? Questions? Anything? Okay. Good. Okay. So here is office man. I mean, here's the office stuff. This is literally for this is literally what we pay for our storage facility, right? Isn't this beautiful? Like, this is another thing that I love about storage facilities is that you don't have any bills because beforehand we were doing rehabs, and I'm telling you, I was just writing so many checks all the time, contractors, and just check after check every. And it's just writing like 10, 20, 30, 40 checks in a week, and I was just so tired of writing checks. And so, in January of last. year, Right, 2019 was like elimination of as, of as many bills as we possibly can, right? So we finished up all of our rehabs and got rid of all of our, as many bills as we possibly can. And then everything is now like automatic. Like we don't even have checks. We have no checks at all in our company. Like we do not write checks at all. And if we need to send a check out, we just So, um, so even like our contractors, are gonna contractor it's like you've got to bill me sorry you know it's time to get a 21st century but we don't even write checks anymore isn't that awesome i love it i just feel like i'm so free you know but um anyway so um yes yeah, so like i said we do have a manager hours a week but she's gonna be bumped up once we get to 650 doors she's gonna be bumped up to 40 hours a week we pay her 15 dollars an hour is what we pay her okay and um the software it, this is gonna be you're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna get some sort of an interface that manages your facility online, right? Because you're gonna go completely electronic. You're not gonna be one of those storage facility owners that you know has a paper contract. Those are the ones that you buy from, and then you implement your storage facility. And, and the software out there, if you if you get any software, you'll have a website that comes with it, and then the interface on the back office to manage all your tenants, all your Accounts, all your reports, all your records, all your maintenance on your facilities. I mean, for $150, $200 a month, it's totally worth it, right? So, um, the software and then marketing. Now, you're going to have to market to fill these units up, right? That's the one thing that people totally forget. It's like, oh, I want to find I get the money for the facility. Oh, well, then they get in. They're like, well, how the hell do I run this thing, right? Now I got to come out of pocket every single month for like marketing this thing. Oh my gosh. I I didn't even think about that, right? So we we pay around a thousand dollars a month for marketing. That's for six six facilities, but um, but actually, actually, you know, some of our facilities are full. But on average, I'm saying a couple hundred dollars a month per facility is what you should be part. You should be budgeting, right, for your marketing budgets. So make sure you put that in and calculate that because that's an expense. Electric, um, your electric uh, is like if you have a gate or lights right so you have lights it's going to cost you money you know we have a couple of facilities that don't have lights you know so it's like it's like it's just like a night and when it's dark you can't go there unless you have like a flashlight but there's some of our lights and gates and suddenly you have more of an electric and it's not really that much like i think the most we have is like 50 bucks a month that's control most of the time you're gonna have to do some sort of pest control right because you know people you know there's bugs and people rats and stuff like that right so you do this it's not that expensive it's like 50 bucks you know once every couple of months or something like that and then trash removal yard removal, yeah so we pay uh we pay to get like trash picked up or anything that you know because like tenants just leave crap like what they'll do is they'll take a picture of the facility like of their unit you will say okay like you're, you're leaving awesome and we'll give you a deposit back to just send us a picture of your unit and it shows all your trash gone and so they'll send us a picture of the unit and then we'll go down like a couple of days later and we'll 
So, so um, then we'll just have to get that picked up. But actually, our boots on the ground person, he kind of goes around and just picks all that up. He knows. You know, we pay him a couple hundred dollars a week to do that, to overlock, to fix any doors, fix any issues going on, just pay him to do that. Now. And then, and you have your mortgage and your taxes and your insurance, okay? And insurance comes out to facilities like my facilities, you know, just like, and I'll show you the picture of a couple of my facilities here in just a minute. But facilities come out to about, um, I'm sorry, insurance comes out to about $1,000 a year. And, you know, on a typical, uh, like, 100 unit facility, it's like $1,000 a year. And the more, more units that you have, and the more your insurance is, okay? So if we've got 200 units, double the price, something like that. So that's kind of how you calculate. And then, okay, yes, let's talk about let's talk about storage boards. All, everybody always wants to everybody always wants to um, ask about auctions and how does the auction process work? And the truth of the matter is that there is like no storage wars. I'm sorry, this is this has never happened at all. Like we have essentially. What's happened over the course of the last couple of years is we have like thrift store owners, you know, that, you know, they just go around to all self storage facilities in the area. Whenever there's an auction, they pay attention to the newspaper. And whenever there's an auction, they just like come to the auction bid. And when they're bidding, it's like, there's probably like three, four or five different auctions you see thrift store owners. When they bid, it's like maybe 25 to $50, I think one storage facility we may have gotten like a hundred dollars on the unit and that's it like they're not paying a lot of money in fact most of the time you open it up and people all look in and they're just like yeah no i'm not gonna buy it right so um and that's basically you know that's basically it so everybody that thinks that their storage wars are gonna make lots of money on the units it just doesn't happen right it's totally fake all right fake tv just like hgtv flipper flop and all that's all fake it's the same thing as storage, okay? Um, but what you do have to pay attention, what you do have to understand is you've got to understand all of the, you know, the, the auction process within your state, all right? I use, uh, I use Legal Shield. Does anybody use Legal Shield? I'm just wondering, but we use Legal Shield for all of our legal stuff. And essentially what I did is um, I just called Legal Shield up and it's basically free, free advice, law, free law advice. And I said, okay, like I just bought it, I just bought it our storage facility uh, like you know we have to do some auctions what's the auction process and they just told us exactly what to do within our state right so every state is completely different I'm in the state of Georgia that's where our facilities are so we had to learn what that process was in order to do the auctions so I highly recommend that you talk to an attorney to get the actual auction process right that's my personal opinion is just talk to an attorney and if you have legal show you can you can use legal show them up and then you know we have storage facilities that have like parking right so you know we have one facility that's kind of like and actually i'm going to show you in just a few minutes it's kind of like an industrial area and um and it uh, like it's got like it's got units and then it's also got parking coach trucks and big rigs and um and uh like uh dump trucks and like box trucks and like you know this kind of thing we do a lot of that is what we do on this parking which is fine with us we don't care who parks there just because they pay us every single month right and um and so well, that one like if you have vehicles and then we have one facility that is like boats and rvs but if you have like vehicles like it's a whole that's because that's private property or that's like uh like you know it's an automobile right so you have in the state of georgia you have the um you have the uh, uh, you have the the auction process laws. You have like for the units themselves, and then you have the auction process laws for the uh, the vehicles. Okay, and it all depends on what type of vehicle it is, what the process is going to be. So you really have to that is okay. Okay. All right. Cool. And again, you need to be able, when you're managing your facilities, you need to be able to train your tenants, right? You have to automate 
be systematized. So what I mean by this, that as soon as your tenants move in, right? As soon as they come, they say, yes, I'd like to move in. This is where we have like in our contract, the way it works for us is they go online to the website, right? Or they call us up and they say, hey, we're interested in giving, you know, what's your way? You say, okay, it's six bucks a month or whatever for 10 by 10. It's okay, yes, I'd like to move in, right? So then you move them in and as soon as soon as you move as soon as you move them in in the software, right? They get sent the contract. And the contract is a like is a one page each, you know, sorry, not one page. It's like a one document, one PDF, right? Where they're going to go through and electronically, they're going to click, click, yes, sign, yes, sign, you know, this is good or whatever. And they're going to go through and soon if they have a vehicle, they fill out their vehicle information or whatever it is, they fill this one thing out. All right, so that we, we put them into the system. They fill out the, the contract. They pay. We put, they put the money, put the credit card through. And then they are getting the, their code, their gate code, if they have a gate code in the storage facility, they get that email to them and, um, and then they can just go right in and they can, uh, they can move in. All right. Com completely automated. I mean, it takes literally like from start to finish to get somebody in maybe a couple minutes and that's it. All right. We never, ever, ever meet our tenants. Never. Nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows who the owners are. The, um, uh, we don't ever really honestly talk to them. Once in a while we'll get some you know some customers like i want to talk to the owners for some reason you know but every once in a while we never talk to the owners maybe never talk to the tenants and essentially what happens is in, in that contract in our contract that we have for the, the store the self storage we have a checklist that we made and it's like and it, and, and they have to go through and initial it and inside each initial it read it says like what our rules are right so essentially you know if you're going to park in day parking you've got to park correctly you know don't leave your trash um, make sure you lock your facility we're not responsible for anything so there's this kind of like this check list that they sign and it's so whatever rules that you want for your uh, facility right? so you have your contract you can put your rules in we make sure that every single one of the tenants signs this every single line initials it and then signs the bottom and um, and that's kind of like back and say, well, I didn't know that rep was doing blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, first of all, it was in the contract. And second of all, you signed our checklist, right? And so we kind of double check that. And we have that one contract, that one PDF that they sign. And then what happens is as soon as they sign that, that just goes right into their account and it's saved into their account, all right? Completely automated um, and systematized so that later down the road, it's something happens, we just pull up their account and all their information, everything that they've done is right there. And on the software that you guys use, you decide to, you decide to buy, the, buy a facility, on that software, inside that software, in their account, like what happens is you actually get a phone number from the company that provides that, um, that website and the back office, they'll provide you with the phone number and then you can use that phone number and then everything that happens through that phone number. So like in our software, if they call, it goes into the account. If you leave them a voicemail, it goes into the account. Any text messages that you do, you can it goes into the account. And then if you send any emails out to them through, you know, through the software, you can tell when they've opened it, when they, you know, when they, uh, you know, when and you can check whenever, whenever they go into the account, you can see everything, right? You know, so when some, when client calls and says, oh, well, I didn't get a notification for auction process, or I didn't get like the late email or I didn't you know I didn't know this well you could you could open up their account basically and say okay well we texted you on this day uh, and we saw that you opened the text right we emailed you on this day and we saw that you opened the email and we uh, we left a voicemail on this day as well too and then you can just literally like email all that information to them and say this is your account this is exactly what you've been doing we can see everything that you're doing right on this account right and that is why you need to have some sort of a software that manages your business so that there's nobody that comes back later and says, well, you did this and you did this. It's like, no, because we have everything right in this account. We can see exactly what's going on, right? So that is automating and systematizing. And then inside that software, you also automate and systematize your maintenance for your units, right? So if a latch is broken or 
or a door is broken, you just go right into that unit and you pull it up and say, okay, repair needed, you know, you take, make it unrentable, right? So that new batch needed, right? And you can do that for every single one of your units as well. So not only does your tenant have a, um, a history in the, in the software, your units also have a history. Right? And you can click on each of those units. You can say, okay, who, who was ever P12? Right? And you can click on it, all the history of that unit going further. You can see that all right in your software. But that is the power of automating system placement. Right? So our boots on the ground for so when he goes around, basically has an iPad and he has the you know, our software open and he just clicks and he says, okay, I overlocked B12. Oh, I fixed a B13. You can make that rentable again. Oh yeah, I cleaned out B14. It's looking good. You know, put that back on. And it's just like right there in the software. You mentioned it literally. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Finally, okay, so this is one of our storage facilities, all right, and um, so you can, let's do this, let's move this out of the way. Okay, so this is the facility you see, this is a really long facility, it's got 64 units right here, and right? all the way, down. this is a three acre lot, this whole lot is three acres, and then this is right in the, this building right here on the right, you can see, is like um, right on, uh, the building on the right, is right on the um, is right in the middle of the of the um, property, and then all the way around you can see in a big circle going all the way around is all parking. So you can see box trucks are here, and this is the kind of parking that we have in this facility. It's like dump truck parks, box trucks, uh, you know, tow trucks. This is kind of what this park is is the park. Right? And um, that's my daughter Lily. This is our facility. Our, ours is this is Lillian's self store. This is Lillian right here. And um, you can see our uh, sign is right there. So you can see under the management um, and then cars, trucks, and big rig parking allowed, right? Pretty cool, right? Got some big rig parking. All right. So as you can see, here are the numbers. It's like a case study for this facility. Okay. Let's try to calculate it and see if y'all can calculate. I purchased, we purchased this property for $250,000. You can pull up our cap rate calculator, and let's just calculate the cap rate on this, thing, right? So we bought it for $250,000. Our gross rental income, right? So we make, uh, let's just calculate it out, 64 units, right? At an average of $75,000, right? Plus parking, 50 parking space. Okay, so let's calculate this out. Let's do 75 times $8,800 a month. So just for the units alone, make $4,800 a month. And then we have 50 parking space, dollars a month, which is $3,000. So together we have $7,800 a month that we make on this facility, okay? So $7,800 times, $7, times 12 is $93,600. So if we go into, uh, we can go into the capital, calculator and just put our this is put our thing our um, our income is ninety three thousand now our expenses are here right so you can see our mortgage is twenty one sixty a month and our expenses come out to you know two hundred and sixty dollars a month or something right so let's say it's like let's say we have twenty five hundred dollars a month in expenses okay plus and actually insurance is it's about three thousand dollars a year right so three thousand let's say that's anyways Let's just say it's like $2,500 a month. Okay, so $2,500 a month of expenses times 12 is Okay, so this is what it looks like. Hang on. Let's show this up to y'all so y'all can see. Now this is what the cap rate calculator looks like. So we, so we bought it for $250,000. We make if, if it's 100% full around let's say $90,000 a year, even if we put $90,000 $90,000 a year. Okay, 8% vacancy is about average, right? You know, that's the number that you used to calculate. Really, you calculate 30% of your 
gross income as your expenses, right? So I put 30,000, so 90, 30,000 is 30%, 30 right? So as you can see, let's calculate, the recovery is 21%. 21%. I mean, there is no type of commercial building out there that gets this, right? No multifamily is going to get this. People are teaching you to buy commercial buildings at a cap rate of 5 to 7%, and they're happy with this, right? Only in the storage industry. And this, remember, this is a mismanaged facility. So now we're making, let's just say, we, you know, we're making between 80 and 90 thousand dollars a year on this property right and if you calculate if you want to go back you can reverse engineer that let's just say we want to we want to sell it at an eight percent cap rate right so let's just put six hundred thousand if we sell this property at six hundred yeah if we sell this property at six hundred thousand it's an eight point eight percent we bought it for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and we can sell it as if we can sell it at six hundred thousand we'll make three Three hundred on this property, not including that the expenses are only twenty five hundred dollars a month, right? And um, making what was it seventy eight hundred? So let's just say we make seven thousand a month minus twenty five hundred, right? So we're making we're netting forty five hundred dollars a month on this property. And you know what? We have I've been to this property one time in the last six months. One time in the last six. months. No, and, and actually we are increasing increasing rates. Yes, we are increasing. This is 100% full, this property. It's been 100% full. Every once in a while we get like one person to move out or whatever, but for the past two to two and a half years, this property has been 100% full. All right, so that's the value. That's the value add of a mismanaged property. But remember, the very first year, we came out of pocket every single month. And we, we probably put at least 15 to 20 grand into that property cleaning up because it was a dump. So we're making double, we're making, I mean, even if we're only making 10%, I mean, most people are trying to buy at 7 or 8% cap rates. A lender is going to lend you money based on an 8% cap rate, a commercial lender. So we're in the process of refining this out now, and they're telling us that their lending numbers at an 8% cap rate and we're getting like almost you know, six hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's like we're not going to borrow that much money, but essentially they're saying like we could borrow eighty percent of six hundred thousand so, um, dollars. So that's what we're trying to figure out is what we want to do. Like because right now we really just uh, we're really just trying to I mean, we are going to we are going to refi. Now, but I don't know if we're going to borrow enough money to um, to get another one. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, or we're going to just keep it that we just make that money because when you when you refi it out, even the you know the interest rates are going to be like five point five six percent. I'm saying so our our bills are going to go down even more. On this. They're probably be, be like all oh, only like fifteen hundred dollars a month or something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we'll have all that money every single month that we can just live off. Essentially, we can honestly just live off just one facility because we don't really. As I said, you know us. Like we sold everything that we own and we live off of very little right now. We have no bills. We paid our house cash. And we just eliminated all of our bills. So we essentially can live off this one facility. Anyway, so that's kind of um, that's kind of how storage facilities work, isn't it? Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yes, you can do 1031s on storage facilities. Actually, I have a student right now in my mastermind. He has to do a 1031 within the next 45 days. So he's out just like, and he actually has one right now that he's very interested in getting. And he's going to do a 1031 exchange on it. So yes, you can do 1031s. In fact, my, my accountant was like, you need to do 1031 exchange because you've got to credit and taxes and stuff. So, um, so definitely, definitely. In increasing rates, we have every time that somebody moves out, we, we increase that rate. And that's the power of that software that I told you, right? So what you could do is like set like an automatic rate rate increase as soon as that unit is out you could be like okay I raise that rate by ten dollars or something and it just as soon as somebody moves out that rate is increased for that one facility anyways so pretty cool isn't that pretty awesome I love it so I apologize for the um, you know I'm not sure maybe tomorrow what we'll do is we'll try only zoom and not Facebook what do y'all think about that? And then see if just the zoom by itself is better. Maybe it's because of Facebook it's doing the skip 
sleeping. Um, I think actually, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to do this. Is, I think actually tomorrow, let's just try that because I know y'all were having some issues. Um, was the Zoom working okay or no? Um, now, the, uh, now make sure that you do this as well too. I want to make sure that y'all text Rhea to the 818. Did y'all do this yesterday? I just want to make sure y'all do this. And this is where you're going to get my six step system. We're going to go through all through the week. That's what we're doing is just taking one step at a time and just digging deep into each one of those things so tomorrow we're going to do how to of uh, how to find a storage facility how to virtually find storage facilities i'm going to get on and i'm going to show you i've been talking about going on the maps and all this kind of stuff i'm going to get on and just show you how to do that tomorrow okay that's our big thing but other than that so your home homework for tonight is to look for storage facilities on google maps figure out your market and try to come up with you know storage facilities in your area that are just one-offs right and then if you have time man go drive it for some storage facilities if it's not too far away from you just go check it out and see the only way you're going to learn is if you drive around that's it the best part about storage facilities is that the phone number is right on the sign right and it's not like you have to know what you're talking about i'm telling you all these storage facility owners they don't have any idea about commercial analysis they don't okay all right so other than that um other than that if you find any properties put them into the Facebook group and tag me and then I can help you to uh, to analyze it and take a look at it too well so if you need any questions or anything just tag me right in there so I know that you posted it and then I'll get in there and we can chat about any properties that you find out right but your homework your homework for this week your challenge for this week is to learn how to find storage facilities right and then go out and look for them what you have to do you have to learn how to find them and then go out and look for them and and then call them and just talk to them, right? Whether or not you get it or not, the only way you're ever going to get a storage facility is if you start looking for asking people what they want to sell. Okay. All right. That, I think that's it. I had a couple of chats. Everybody can hear me. Okay, good. I think that's it. I hope everything, uh, I hope y'all are getting something from this and just, uh, we'll talk in the Facebook Live group. Okay. Um, what is the minimum population? we should be looking for in our area i mean honestly i'm in a, i'm in a, an area where there's like like there's like a whole bunch of little towns that are right next to each other and each town just has like a couple of hundred people in it only in town but essentially like you know so the population i don't think that that is such a big concern a, a, a lot of people are really concerned about population you know but i mean we have a storage facility that literally may he has a couple thousand dollars within maybe a, a, couple, a couple thousand people within a five thousand radius and we're doing fine remember i live in jasper georgia all right jasper georgia has it has a population of ten thousand people and there's 20 storage facilities in the area go look up jasper georgia on google maps and every single one of those storage facilities is completely full completely full all right So yeah, so you want to look at the population and you divide that population by the square footage. Okay, look at the population. So what if you really want to be honestly, I personally, I mean everybody says this is what you're supposed to do, but I don't really do this because what I do instead is I as I call around and see who's full, right? And like, are you full? Like, do you have any spaces available? And like, you know, someone's like, like you know, 10, you know, I'm like 80% full or 90% full or something like that. So, but what you could do is take, and this is the harder route, but you can do this. Is, and this is what, like, this is what the big REITs do. This is what the people that, like, you know, this is what, you know, this is what, like, you know, some, some people do. I don't know. But you can basically take the population of the area and divide it by the total amount of square footage in the area for storage facility. Okay. And the number should be around six, right? Six per square foot. Okay. So, but and that's one way. That that's one way that people do it, right? You know, but I personally, like, I'm telling you, there's 10,000 people in my city and there's 20 storage facilities completely full. How can you calculate? And then, I and then there's like, I have a storage facility where I'm in the area of like maybe 3,000 people and I'm the only one and that's it, right? So I know people think that there's a formula for it. I get that. But um, at the same time, honestly, I'm telling you, the storage facility 
the owners that know how to market, those are the ones that are really going to make out, right? Because it's all about marketing. And I'm going to find that webinar by Steph from Marcus and Milchap, because what they did is they talked to the, the big, the big reads and stuff. They talked about how they market their facilities and they have some really clever ideas on how they do it. They get, because you know, they have units. I mean, they're having to market and market and market, right? Whereas we have just a couple of units and we're, you know, we need to work. Okay, so, but, um, so they talk about some ideas on how to market. And I'm telling you, if you know how to market your facilities and run your facilities properly, you are going to be just fine, right? The ones that don't make it are the ones that do not know how to run their business. Most people do not think about that when they're looking for a storage facility. They're not thinking, I need a marketing budget to make sure that I have, you know, I can have spending money for my, for my uh, tenants to fill these units, right? That's the thing. And so you budget your marketing. So that's why I said I spend around that on marketing. Now, love to have more I would love to have more money you know um, you know so and but a couple hundred dollars a month should be a good start for you to market to get your um, your units filled so make sure you budget that in and get good good at like you know Facebook ads and Google Analytics and and AdWords and things like this because that's ultimately what you're going to be doing okay all right cool all right I'll see y'all tomorrow same time all right and we'll try zoom for next time y'all you know, just pause on the, uh, the the facebook stuff and maybe that's what's doing the lag okay okay take care all right take care and i will talk to you all soon